her simple living's valued, she'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. and welcome back. Today I am going to work on getting started putting this sweet little one, she's a 27, not a 127, a 27 back together. Uh, before I do, I can feel that the shaft needs a little bit of oil, so I'm going to go ahead and get her oiled up and then we're going to get her put back together. I've got all of her parts here and they have been cleaned. Um, I will give them a final polish before I install them, but if you didn't see how dirty they were when I was taking her apart, you know, that's part one of this whole thing. But trust me, she is a whole lot cleaner now. Uh, so let me go ahead, add a little bit of oil, and get this little area in here all oiled up so that this shaft is turning freely, and then we're going to go ahead and get started putting her together. Okay, so basically, just making sure, you know, after a cleaning has happened that I oil the little hole here, up here, in here, throw some oil in here, which you cannot see, right in here where this little cog is turning, a little from the front to make sure that there's nothing binding up here, and you know, just a general over. And I can tell you that after doing that and just spinning her a little bit, she's moving really freely. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get started on her bottom. So this is her bottom, all nice and clean now, as you can see. I did not remove this shaft and its assorted basketry, um, but that's okay. I would rather leave the main shaft in and leave that in than, you know, take risks of getting things messed up in there. One of the first thing I'm going to do is go through my bag of pieces, bags of pieces, and separate it out um, by area. So, like, I can look at this and know this is part of this part. So I'm pretty much separating out everything that goes up here, everything that goes here you know, different components so that I can keep things straight and just handle one at a time. I will be polishing up the plates. They're clean, but I will be giving them a little extra polish in just a bit. Much cleaner. Anyhow, let me get it sorted. Okay, so I'm going to work with what they are calling the feed regulator fork and all of that. Um, basically, here is my fork, much cleaner. There's a little bearing that I've cleaned up. It's going to go on here. And I'm going to show you this now because once I'm inside there, you can't see anything. Um, this little block is going to slide up and down on this bearing, okay? Now, there's a hole in the block. That is what gets screwed on to this big bolt here, and there is a round washer with three little tabs that stick out of it that go on here. That's what is going to be holding this in place, okay? And this is what's going through this hole right underneath where the wheel goes, all right? Now on this side of the block, there's a little, I don't want to lose my bearing here, there's a little nub sticking out. This is the knob on the outside of the machine, so on the front of the machine up here. Okay, there's a, a little screw hole where this goes in. And this is what determines how long your stitch length is. So it's going to be sitting like this, where this little space at the end of here is positioned over that nub, okay? So as you screw this in, it rocks. It rocks this little block, which in turn changes the stitch length, okay? So in order to get that all in place, I have to do a lot of maneuvering on the inside and everything like that. 
and it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, so I'm going to spare you all the video of that, but that's what I'm going to do, so give me a minute to get it all put back together. I figure it might be a good idea to show you where this fork is connecting to. See, it has these two flat places here on the main shaft that I did not remove. If you can see right in here where it's turning, how that it's not a, a circle, it's got different shapes on it. Well, that fork will get positioned over there, so as the shape of that turns, the fork will go up and down, okay? So, this part, there's a little place with a screw right next to it. That's where this is going on. All right, so at this point, if you can see, as I screw this in, it's moving this lever back and forth, okay? And that should turn very, very freely at this point. I don't even have the fork in there yet. If it's turning very, very stiffly, this screw might be in a little bit too tight. You want it in tight enough that it's going to hold it, but if you really crank it down, it's going to bind on this little block piece, and, you know, that makes things uncomfortable sometimes. So we're good here. I'm going to go ahead and get the fork with its little bearing now. Well, I can tell you that it does not want to go back in there easily, so I think what I need to do is pull all of this out, slide the fork in, and then try to put this stuff back in because, um, yeah, it this this bearing can't work can't work around this. So I'm going to slide my fork in first. All right, I finally got it all locked together. It's like a Chinese puzzle in there. And so what I have found is if I put this in but leave it unscrewed all the way. Slide my fork in with the bearing attached to the fork and then maneuver my little block in, the last thing. Set it so that the little nub is aligned and then kind of push it up onto that bearing. That works the best. So now that everything is together, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my little screw with its three-pronged washer back in there and hopefully everything will work out fine but I just wanted to show you that worked the best for me you know going in that particular sequence otherwise you're like fighting against yourself in there okay so with everything screwed back together we are good to go here I'm gonna go ahead and flip it upside down and start working on the bottom okay so I've got this little bearing and its whole little arm cleaned up. I'm just going to go ahead and set this in place down here. The bearing is going to ride in this little part. I don't know the technical name of this part, but that's where it's going to go. I need to get my little pivot screws and attach the ends uh, to the casting with the pivot screws. And where are you? Here you are. So, of course, there will be adjustments that need to be made, okay, and I need to polish up the tips of these before I put them in. Um, but these are going to go from the outside. You basically put the screw in like this from the outside in. Once it's in the position that you want, then tighten the nut up against the casting, and it's going to hold the screw in exactly that position. So let me polish up the tips of these and get this set in, one on each side. And at this point, I'm trying to get it tight enough that it's not going to rattle terribly, uh, but loose enough that it's still going to turn easily, because if you cinch these in too hard, it's going to bind up on here. So, like I said, I'm just going to place these nuts on by hand right now when I do my final adjustments. I'll put it on with my wrench to hold it in nice and snug. Okay, so I have this lovely eccentric bolt, I believe it is called. It's got this big collar on it that's like a bearing, okay, and there's a nut that goes with it. I'm just going to line up this end of that fork that we put in through here and the nut goes on the other side. Let me see if I can get her pushed in here. I 
and I did polish up that bearing area and clean everything else so hopefully it will run smoothly um, you know what I am going to take a second while it's still out just a hair and put one drop of oil on there so I can push it in the rest of the way and tighten up this bolt don't want it too tight okay alrighty so now I'm just gonna put this little bar on this has a like a bearing kind of shaft coming up here too which I have cleaned. I'm going to stick a drop of oil inside here. And then over on this side, come on, why aren't you going down? Oops, I have it upside down. That is why the flat part, there's a round part and a flat part. The flat part should be what you're looking at, okay? If you put the other way, it won't fit. So good to know. I have a little flathead screw. Don't go down there, little screw. Okay, and I'm going to set right here and screw in. Um, I did clean these little clamps here, so I'm going to tighten that up. Let me loosen it a hair while I am adjusting things, however. Okay, now over here. I have another one of these screws uh, with the little shoulder. It's clean, but it's not polished, so I'm going to go ahead and polish this up. Put a little bit of oil on this bearing shoulder here. Put it in and tighten it up right here. Okay, so that all looks to be going well. I'm going to go ahead and get my feed dogs put on. They're going to slide in right over here. So this is what it looks like. It is clean. They're just dark. And let me polish up the little screw. Get that set right in here. Okay, so I have my little feed dogs. You just slide them into the slot. And there's a place over on this side where I'm going to put my little screw in. There I go. My little screwdriver here. Ah, I just popped them out, which is not good. Okay, well, let me slide these back in there you know, and uh, get those set. Okay, so I have that screw put back in. There's a little bit of play here. Um, so if you need to raise and lower the feed dogs, you just unscrew this a hair and you can move them up or down just a little bit, you know, just a little bit, not a whole lot. Okay, so let me, uh, with that in place, the only thing I need to still put on the bottom is the little bracket that the uh, bobbin sits in so it was very dirty and rusty before it's looking better I'm gonna polish her up and slip her in underneath here so this little spot right here which you cannot see this spot right here that is where this bracket is going to slide underneath okay and it'll get the screw hole here lines up with this one and that's how it's connected. So while the machine is upright, if you position your little bracket so it's right in the center, you know you can't see, so if you position the bracket from the bottom, you know, the holder where it's right in the center here, then you can just slide this piece in. But I need to flip it upside down to get to that screw hole. So I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers here. And there's the hole I need to get my little screw in. I needed it in the center to get the bracket in, but you need to turn it over to one side so you can actually reach that screw hole there. And cinching it in. Now, if you remember, I did not take this piece off. I left it on so it's not as highly polished as the rest of it, but it is clean enough, so I think that is fine. From the right side, See here, if you can see, it's looking really good. That little bracket is super clean and polished in here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the front. So let me move my board again. The trusty, trusty two by four and get all of the pieces out that are gonna work in here. Alrighty, so I'm going to work on my presser bar here. So I'm just going to slide it down from the top 
And I don't believe, no, my spring does go through. Okay, well that makes life a lot easier. So my spring is halfway through. I'm gonna, got my little block here. It is polished. This part goes through the little slot on this side over here. So let me get that set in. And then feed the presser bar the rest of the way down. And it should go all the way through down below. Okay. Um, I have a washer that goes up here on top of that spring. And then there's the little finial screw top that keeps that in. I'm just going to get it started. Um, Ooh, the spring will not go through though. Oh no. Okay. Well, the spring won't go through the top. So I'm going to have, to, and the spring needs to sit just above, the, the washer needs to sit just above the spring. So let me do this again. Let me set that little block up here. Start my little presser bar through, put the washer on, put the spring on. Okay, and now the little block here into the slot and feed this through. All right, I think that we're good now. Um, what I'm gonna do is grab the bottom where it's nice and flat just wiggle it around to make sure everything is set in. I think it is. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and screw the little top finial in just a hair. Okay. It's in. It started thread, so that's good. So the presser foot is going to go on like this. All right. So we know that this is the right orientation for for the presser bar. Um, I I'm, need to set the height for it. Um, but let me go ahead and put this little screw. Oh, you know what I need to do before I do that? I need to put on the dreaded thread cutter. <sighs> okay, so let me go ahead and get this slid up onto the presser bar and then we'll put the foot on it. Once the foot is on, then I can set the presser bar height, which I will do by adjusting a screw that's gonna go in that hole. I almost made another terrible, terrible mistake. So this is the little race that the cam on here, this little nub that has a bearing that goes on there. I'm gonna stick a little drop of oil on that goes through so once again I am going to unscrew this top and pull the needle bar or the presser bar out a little bit so that I can get this piece snugged in. Now this side over here, this goes into the little groove. You don't see it on the outside, but on the inside there is a groove cut into the casting and this slides into it that way. So, you know, all good, all good. Just make sure I don't lose my little washer. Where is my oil? Here it is. Okay, I'm just going to put a little drop of oil up here and slide my little cleaned bearing on there. Okay, you put a drop of oil into the race and slide that so over here so it's going to be in line with that groove. Let me look at all my parts to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I think I'm good now. So you know the drill. Once again I'm going to put in my presser bar, put in my spring, line it up with the little block, and line it up with the hole. Okay? So now with that in there I'm going to go ahead and slide my needle bar through and the needle bar needs to go through this bracket here. You know what, I am going to put some oil in this little area. So hopefully it will fly through there a little bit easier. Okay, lining it up with this bracket here. 
and all the way through to the bottom. Okay, so that's moving pretty well. I'm going to need to cinch up this screw here, but you can see this little hole. Maybe you can't, but trust me, there's a little hole there. I'm going to push it up and line it up with the hole up here, okay? And cinch this screw together. I have the, I think I have the wrong size bit on here. Hang on a second. Okay, with that cinched together, um, now I need to get the little screw that's going to go in here. And I'm hoping this is it. It looks right. Okay, so if I turn this now, looks like everything is working right. Okay, good job. What I need to do now, and um, it's kind of hard to get to sometimes, is put together the little needle holding bracket, which is going to slide on the bottom here, but there is also a thread guide, and is it in the back? Where is the hole for the thread guide? Oh, it's over on the side here. Okay, I'm going to need to get this little thread guide wire screwed on. There's a tiny little screw that goes with it. I'm going to go ahead and just tighten up this little screw just so that my presser foot won't be going everywhere while I'm working on this. Um, because I need to turn this machine this way so that I can see. You can't see. And right here where I'm pointing there's a little hole in the shaft and you can hear my little dog barking. I'm going to need to go home because it's getting dark over there. But this is going to get screwed into the shaft and this wire comes down and kind of wraps around where the bracket is here. Okay, so when you're all done, the wire comes around like that. But you have to do it all down here. So let me get this put together. I kind of skipped ahead and did not get this little arm, the thread take-up arm that runs in this little gear put back in. So I'm going to try to get that really quick. Maybe from the back. Oh, from the back. Looks like it's going to work fine. Okay. So just let me turn things to make sure it's actually set in well because that does not quite feel right. Um, come on, wiggle, wiggle, hold on, let me turn off the camera for one second and just spend some time wiggling this, I think, oh, there we go, okay, now we're good, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get this big old flat screw and pop that on here and snug it down. I have found that sometimes if I turn it as I tighten it, it helps to get everything wiggled in correctly, you know. Now I can tell that I turned it just a hair too tight. So I'm going to loosen it up a bit. And that's much better. Hang on a sec. That's nice. I want to see how tight I can go before I get to that binding area. And that's where I'm going to leave it, I think. Okay, so it is moving up and down here. You see this little lever going up and down? That's that. And now the last thing I need to do up here is the little presser bar lifter, which for some reason I also skipped over. Um, I'm gonna get that little lifter polished up really quick and we're just gonna slide it in place. Now my battery's almost dead, but I wanted to mention, you should do this before you put your presser bar in. I think I can get it in there and cinch it up with this tiny little screwdriver, you know? Um, but, yeah, this should happen before the presser bar <laughs> goes in. If it doesn't work here, um, I will go ahead and take the presser bar out again, and you know that whole routine, so... Let me get this in here, and I'm going to call it a night, 
and I will see you back here tomorrow. Hello, and welcome to the next day. I, uh, sorry about all the dark images last night. I should learn not to try to record when it's nighttime, because no matter what lighting I have in here, it's my shop, you know, it's not a movie studio. So, yeah, it was dark. Um, I wanted to just pick up where I left off, and what I just did was polish my little plate here, because I'm gonna need to make some adjustments down below. Remember, I just put those pivot screws in willy-nilly, and uh, I need to make some adjustments or else this plate won't fit on those feed dogs. So I've got it cleaned up. Um, let me see if I can show you here. So here are my feed dogs, and if I try to just place this little plate over the hole, they don't even come close to lining up. My feed dogs are far, far this way, all right? So down below here, what is holding my feed dogs in is this bracket, which is connected to this shaft. So I need to move this entire shaft that way in order for my feed dogs to fit. So for me, it's honestly a little bit of trial and error. What I'm looking at over here is I can see two threads sticking out of the screw outside the bolt. And those two threads are honestly pretty close to the distance that my feed dogs need to move over. So, oopsie, I am just gonna gauge this by the thread. So I am going to loosen on the opposite side the bolt so that I can tighten this side. So I'm gonna loosen up this nut to the end, tighten it up, okay? And that should move this bracket over, okay? So it's a little, like I said, it's a little bit of a trial and error for me. I'm gonna flip it over now, put my little plate on and see how that lines up. And, oh, it's really good. I think I need to go over like one more millimeter. So like half of a thread. So I'm gonna flip it over one more time here. Tighten it in, loosen this nut. And that's gonna put my nut pretty much flush with the very end of the screw. I'm gonna tighten it up about half a millimeter. So I have to loosen it up on the other side. Okay, and again, you want this bar to have a little bit of ease of movement, but you don't want it to rattle, okay? So let me adjust this in here, flip it upside down or right side up one more time, place my little plate on and see how everything lines up. And I don't know if you can see, the feed dogs are fitting inside of there. I think that let me turn it and see how that lines up. That actually is pretty well centered. Okay, so it's working pretty well as far as the feed dog placement from this angle, but um, I feel like I need to raise them up a bit. So what I'm gonna do is screw this little plate into place so that when I flip it upside down, it's not going to fall off. So let me get its little screw out here and screw that on. Okay, I think I have them adjusted now. This screw down here, I just loosened it up a little bit, and then with my thumb, I'm able to push up the little bar that the feed dogs are attached to. So I turned my wheel so that they would be at the highest point of travel, which is right about there. And that's where I make my adjustment. I don't want them all the way up, you know, maybe about three quarters of a way up. Again, it's pretty easy to adjust. If you get them at a certain range and you feel like they're too high or too low, just unscrew that little screw a little bit, adjust them and tighten it back up. So now that my feed dogs are at their highest, I'm going to adjust my presser foot. So I'm gonna lower them down here where they're at a low rate of travel. Loosen up this screw right here, okay, so that my presser foot can come back down. And I want it to line up 
the little toes on my presser foot here. You cannot see that. Okay. So what I want is the little toes on my presser foot here to line up with the feed dog. So I, you know, you can turn it like that. So I'm just getting that lined up and I want it all the way down so it is flush with the base of my plate. So my lever is down now. That's my presser foot lever here. So again, I with my lever down, this is the position of sewing, I'm going to line up my presser foot with the feed dogs, and then I'm going to tighten this up a bit, okay? Now, with that tight, and I raise the presser foot, I've got a decent amount of clearance there. That's a, I like that. You can always adjust the amount of clearance you have here, but you need to make sure that you're, you, you can't raise your presser foot higher than your needle bar will let you. So you can see here at the needle bar at its lowest is the highest you can raise your presser foot to, and they are right up against each other there. I should be able to go ahead and get my uh, other accompanying things. I have a bottom liner. I have the tension mechanism. I've got my shuttle and then after that it's pretty much just fancy plates. So let me get my bobbin winder out. Now this, it's interesting because it was not painted, it was just steel. So I left it clean steel. I cleaned it up. But it is clean steel and you can see that it is functioning now very well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this back onto its little bracket here. And there's a screw that goes straight through there that I will connect it with. I feel like it should have been painted, but it wasn't originally, so I'm not going to mess with that. This is the little screw. It just goes straight through the bracket here. It looks like it jumped ship. Just going to go straight through the bracket right there. So there's a little shoulder uh, right in the middle where all of this is going to rock back and forth. Okay, so there it is. It should be able to rock forwards and backwards because that's how you engage it and disengage it with a treadle belt coming right here. This pulley is going to end up in line with where the belt goes on the, the balance wheel, which I actually still have hanging up over there from when I clear coated it. Okay, so now I need to get my tension mechanism. I'm going to get a paper towel to lay it all out here in order and then I can reassemble it. Okay, I've got all my parts here and in the beginning um, I showed you the spring on my tension that was all bent out of shape and I did uh, get one from a donor machine to replace it. So I do have this new-ish new looking spring compared to the other one. And um, on my Singer 127 which is very similar to a 27, you know. Um, they do have an exploded view of the tension. So I just wanted to show you that. It's not exactly like mine, but it's fairly close. The main difference that I see is that this does not have this little doohickey, and um, this does not have an internal pin. The way that you release the tension on mine by this okay so it's a little bit different but you're gonna get the idea so I still recommend if you can find a diagram sometimes it just helps to go ahead and answer your questions the first thing I did is take this little bracket it's got a little thumb that's sticking up and I've screwed that on there's a tiny little screw that's there and I've tightened that up so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my pieces okay so I'm just moving that book out of the way because everything else is different at this point the spring, a lot of times um, on these, on the newer ones, there's a place where you can lock in the bottom of the spring. Turn this light back on. Okay. But there's not on here. The way that this spring maintains its position is in the casting. There's a little stop up here, and down here is a finger, you know? So I'm just setting that in. So this little spring can only rotate up to that stop in the casting and down to where that finger is on this piece. And then this gets screwed in to place. The cast is threaded, so that's screwed in, okay, and the 
little slot is going sideways, horizontal there. So this is what releases tension. And there is a hole in the casting up top. Okay, so I'm going to slide that in to place there. Then comes the two wheels, tension wheels, tension discs. And then is my basket placed in like so. And then is the nut. Okay, let me see something. I'm thinking, I'm thinking here, and I didn't make a note of it when I was taking this apart, which was a bad thing. I'm thinking it makes a lot more sense to put the discs in first and then this, because this can push apart the spring then from the discs. Let me try that. So now if I push the thumb, yes, that releases tension. Okay, so the little thumb presser tension release part um, I'm going to say goes after the tension discs, okay? Because that definitely, you can knock this up here, okay? If you can see the layering here of all of the mechanism, if I push this, there is space in between the tension discs, enough that the thread will come loose. And you can kind of see the, in the inside, this little post right here, that's the top of the thumb, which is just going to keep it in place. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Alrighty, so um, you know what? I am going to assume that my needle bar is in the proper position because of the hole that I used as a guide here. I'm pretty sure that this machine only has one position for the needle bar. It's not adjustable. And when I put that screw in, I lined it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plate back on. I have cleaned up this plate as much as possible. I think that it looks very nice. Um, I need to go ahead and put these screws on. This has just re two regular flat screws. It doesn't have a thumb screw on it. You know, that's fine. Go ahead and cinch those in. And now that the front one is on, I'm going to go ahead and put the little plate that goes here. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to show you my final processing for shining. I have a little speed rubbing compound here that I just kind of rub on to the plates and get a little towel and buff it off. Okay, and that gets all any residual grime or anything off. And honestly, that polishes it up pretty good. Then I can take a little bit of polish. Um, I just have you know car polish here. Put a dot of that on. Rub it on, and I should wait until it dries a little bit. Okay, and then once it's dry, then I buff that off, and I can either use a little microfiber cloth or I also have a clean, well clean-ish, buffer on my drill. I do have a polisher on my polishing wheel but that one honestly is pretty black from doing all of these and I haven't replaced it yet. So I pop this onto my drill. And it's gonna, you know, finish up polishing the little piece and then I'll go ahead and screw it on right there. Okay so that is on. Um, it's on fairly snugly but what I like to do is actually crack it back just a hair so that it will move you know because this is here so you have access to all of this back there so you can put oil on it so if I if I leave it so that you know it's not terribly loose but it does have a shoulder on that screw so to me that means it's meant to be able to move so that when I'm using the machine I can go ahead and put some oil on it. So now there is a pretty plate. Oops my foot came off. I need to tighten that up here. But there's a pretty plate that goes back here that I still need to do the final polish on. Here she is and she does have a thumb screw. And again, the plate is so that you can get in there and, you know, oil it as you use it. And I have, and I highly recommend, um, bottles that have a tiny little needle nose on it. So you can get exactly where you want to go and not just, you know, pour oil everywhere. 
Although I do do that sometimes too. So this is the, you know, clean, but not my finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. It does have some, you know, gouges and everything taken out of it. But I think I can make it a little bit better than that. I just realized when my presser foot came off that it was in a very loose position when I was adjusting my presser foot height. So I need to readjust that. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this little finial here. So I'm just wrapping a towel around it so I don't get it all kajingered, you know. And then I can grab it with my pliers because they are a lot stronger than my fingers and get it cinched in at least halfway. Um, you know, I think that's pretty good because there's a lot of threads on here, but I think that that's pretty good there. So let me go ahead and readjust this. Same method, but just, you know, my presser foot is in a better state now. Okay, so now with my presser foot on, with my presser bar lifted, I want to make sure I can still turn it without the needle bar bumping into anything, and it is working well. So I'm going to call that good for now. Again, when I put thread in and actually try sewing, I may need to make another adjustment, but we will deal with that when that time comes. All right, so I've got my plates on, and sometimes this back one can be tight. You know, just do your best working it until it slides in well. But on here, there's a little hole right here, and um, that is an oil hole. So what I need to do is go get a piece of red felt. I don't have any in here, I don't think. Let me go see. If I don't, I need to run back to my house and get some out of my sewing room, but let me see what I can find. Actually, I found a piece of wicking. Um, this is where I got it on eBay, but it's actually made for vintage uh, fans, but my wicking I use you know in other places on machines and I'm gonna cut a piece of that to fit into this little hole here you can see it's right there so I'm gonna cut a piece so it's nice and flush with the top and then that's gonna be my oil wick it ends up just being a little piece you know that's maybe about three-eighths of an inch long I'm just gonna pop it in there and then saturate it with oil and I'm still not too sure exactly how this works to oil this whole mechanism, but it does. And so I'm good with that. So I can just soak it in with oil and it's good. And now I'm going to slide the plate on. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put my um, shuttle in the bobbin. I've pulled all the old thread off of it and I did um, take off this screw pull off the leaf spring, clean it all up and everything. So that should fit in there well. Let me move the little carrier so it's all the way to the front. And pop it in. Make sure it goes back and forth. Now at this point with the shuttle in, um, I can see that I need to adjust the little bracket, this little bracket right here just a hair i'm going to move it back just a hair and remember there is a screw underneath that can do that so i'm going to put this sliding plate back on so everything doesn't fall out and flip my machine upside down again all right so at this point i think that looks good um, but i won't know for sure until i actually put some thread on her so i'm going to go ahead and go get her box that my husband made for her and screw the little rubber feet onto the bottom, get her set in so that we can try her out. So here's the box. These are the little rubber feet I'm talking about. You know, they just have a little screw that goes inside. And so I'm just gonna set her in here. Looks good. Now I'm gonna, I have a uh, generic treadle table in my workshop here. I'm going to go ahead and set her onto there so I can run a belt on here. Oh, I forgot her hand wheel. Imagine that. That's important, isn't it? Let me go get her hand wheel off of my drying rack. So the hand wheel, um, I did not strip. I just cleaned it really well and then put new clear coat over the original paint. And you can see that shines up really nice. I did clean the outside of the wheel. You know, it's not to a super high polish, but it is definitely better than it was. And the same with 
the little belt guard. I didn't strip it, I just cleaned it really well and then put a new coat of clear coat over it just like the, the machine here. So let me go ahead and get the wheel back on. Um, look for the little pieces to get it locked back into the place. Obviously the little three-sided washer. Okay, making sure the prongs are going in the right way. So I'm just tipping her up and hanging on to her hair because it's a lot easier to work with the gravity when you do this. So if it doesn't work this way, just flip it the other way. One way will work for releasing the clutch, the other way will not. So we're going to start this way. Tighten up this wheel. And you know, that just doesn't feel right. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over right now. Okay, that feels good. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this screw. Now I should be able to just turn this maybe about a quarter turn and then it should stop if I have it on the right way. And it, it, it is correct, so that's good. Now at this point, this groove in the wheel should be lining up with this groove in your bobbin winder, and it does, again, so that's great. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the belt guard up. It just has one screw here to keep it attached, and we'll be done. Okay, so before I can see if she can sew, I need to see if she can wind a bobbin. So I'm over here, got my empty little bobbin spool, and what I like to do is actually slip the bobbin spool into its little holder first. And then I pull it out slightly, and I stick my piece of thread between the spool and the little clamp on this side. And that's going to hold it in place so I can kind of tug and it's going to stay there. So I wrap the thread around this little fork at the top. There is another one at the bottom here. And I'm going to bring it over around this little, I don't know if you can see that this little fork up here. So let's try releasing the clutch and this needs to be brought forward enough that it is 100% engaged with the belt. And why is my needle bar still going up? Don't know. My clutch has been disengaged but my needle bar is still going up. I'm going to need to figure that out. That's probably a cleaning issue up here. Okay, but you can see it's traveling back and forth and feeding. And so I think that's probably about good enough for my testing purposes. Let me go ahead and pop this off, cut the thread, and we'll put it into the shuttle. All right, so now I'm going to hold my shuttle like this. There's a little groove right here. Okay, I want to be looking at that. In my bobbin, I want the thread to be coming from the left side across the front towards the right side, okay? So I'm just going to pop the bobbin in, put my finger on top to keep it from unwinding, bring the thread down that groove, and then you should be able to bring it back up and have it catch. So you can, hopefully you can see the thread has caught. There's a little pointy part under here you can't see and it is going all the way back up. It clicks past here, and now if I pull the thread, the bobbin should turn. All right, hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the shuttle carrier all the way to the front. Pop in my little spaceship bullet carrier there and push this slide plate almost closed. You know, I'm leaving enough that that thread is not bound up. It's very sunny over here, sorry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread through my tension discs, through this little spring. Let's see, yep, if I push this button, it does release tension very well. All right. So I'm going to put it through my take-up lever, 
Okay, so after my tension discs, I brought it up, put it through this take-up lever, hold it in place with my feet, snap it through this little eyelet. Oh, you know what I need in here? I need a needle. Let me go get a needle. My bag of miscellaneous needles. I'm just going to grab a standard, because I believe that this uh, machine uses a standard needle. Pop that in. Let me raise up the needle bar, loosen the little clamp, and set it in there. Now the slot on my needle bar is on the side here. I need to make sure that I set my needle in so my flat part is up against that slot. Okay, and push it up until it can't go any further. Alright, let me go ahead and thread this. Okay, so now that I have my needle threaded, I'm going to bring it down. The moment of truth is, will it catch the bobbin thread? And it's not, so I'm going to slide this open and see what's going on. When it goes down, it looks like I need to adjust the placement of that shuttle um, back out towards the little curved edge just a smidge. Okay, I had to go inside for a little bit. I had some people come by and the sun, at the angle that the sun was coming in my window, it was a little extreme. So it's later in the day now and I'm back and I did adjust that screw um, that moves this little bracket right here and everything's good now. So I need to put the belt back on because I had to take my belt off my machine when I was getting underneath here. So let me pop the belt back on the treadle. Okay, so I'm going to pull the shuttle thread back underneath. So hopefully, hopefully you can see that it will catch everything correctly. So I just close this almost all the way so that thread is still movable. And I only have the, I have a lot of thread sticking out of this little piece of fabric here. Hang on, let me clip that. Okay, so if I put my needle down and back up, at this point it catches the um, Sorry, I'm having trouble with my treadle pedal on the on my floor here. It's not acting right. Um, I am able to go ahead and pull out the bobbin thread, put my fabric underneath, and lower the presser foot. So, at this point, it looks like she's making a pretty balanced stitch. I'm really happy with that. So, let me see here. I'm going to adjust her stitch length, and first I'm going to push it in the entire way. I have turned that little knob so it goes all the way in. Oops. My treadle base is awkward here. So that is the longest length, and it looks like I need to adjust my tension here. My the reason I'm having an issue is the way that this base is set up and I have uh, rubber pads underneath that's bouncing the treadle pedal back every time I stop, which is making the wheel go backwards. I need to adjust some things underneath here. But before I do that, I'm going to back off the tension. And just to show you that this tension release knob right here does work, when I lift this up, I'm going to push that release thumb paddle right there and the tension comes off very easily. So here are my stitches. That is the front, that is the back, and this is the longer length that I just did. You can see that right there and this is the back. I feel like the one side is a tiny bit too tight so I just adjusted that tension. Now we're just going to give it one more try here. Uh, I don't even why my foot pedal is doing that. Anyway, that's feeling better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and back out the stitch length with about halfway. Well, let's take it all the way out so we can see 
when it is all the way out, you have about a centimeter of threads, okay? So I'm going to put it in about halfway, which should give me a good garment stitching stitch length. Hmm, that looks a little bit short for what I am comfortable with, so I'm going to turn it in just a hair more. Sorry. And it's super, super straight. There is absolutely no zigzagging, no anything like that. It's very, very straight. Um, I do need to stop the camera and mess with my foot pedals on the floor because this is really starting to annoy me. But I want to show you, very happy with that. It's a, a very nice stitch. So anyhow, I think she's about done. Um, this was a big experiment to see a few things. First, it was to see if I had to combine the newer um, orderable decals, which, you know, I have some down here, how that would look compared to the originals. You know, would it be so different that it would be jarring to see different ones? And um, honestly, I think that the, I think these are the Keeler sales ones, like I said, I think that they look pretty darn good with the original decals up here. Um, if you really stare at them, you can see that no, they're, they're not exactly the same, but you know, who's going to do that? Um, my other experiment was to see if I could just sand down and repaint just the bed and leave the top as is um, without stripping the entire machine, and I think I can with some caveats. So the thing is, without stripping the entire bed, I think you saw in my previous video where I sanded it down really well, um, even though at that point looking at it, from my eye it looked very smooth, as soon as I got my paint on, every little divot is amplified. So. I think that my conclusion of that is if I was to do this again, I would somehow, whether by, um, you know, an abrasive wheel or something, strip down all of the paint on the bed, the bed if I was just repainting the bed. Um, because yes, it does, it, it is protected, and this is a very strong bed now, but it's not perfect, you know, whereas when you totally strip a machine and reprimer and repaint, you don't have that going on. But yeah, this is going to work. This is going to work. It's just, you know, a little bit of textures here and there that aren't perfect, but honestly, like I said, she's like 100, almost 120 years old, you know? So we're going to cut her some slack. She sews perfectly. She does. Um, I am going to put her up for sale. I'm going to give her at a little bit of a discount because, you know, this was the experiment, uh, but I still think that she is beautiful. She works really well, and I'm happy with what she looks like for what I got to learn from the process. So I hope you enjoyed that, too. As far as making my own decals and figuring out all the ins and outs with possibly using gold leaf, silver leaf, and things like that, I think it was a good idea to try because you never know until you try, but I don't think that it was that successful, you know. And even though I can look at this decal and I can see it, I don't like the way that I had to touch up the edges. You know, you have a, a texture issue there also. And so I would say in my future, if you want to add a decal or just replace just a single one, like say only, for example, only this decal was shot. If you had a ordered decal and just replace that one, what I have learned from this process is uh, you can do that and it's not going to be such a glaring difference that it's going to stick out terribly, you know. So anyhow, that's it. Hope you liked it and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood 
were simple living's valued, she'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of yours, and let her sew again.